the spike from minimal 3DP. And today I'm going to be building a boron stealth burner using the Big Tree Tech EBB SB2209 can board. So let's go ahead and get started. I've been wanting to build a stealth burner for a while. One of the cool features of this cool head is the fact you can put a PCB board in it. And right along with this, Big Tree Tech was gracious enough to send me a, a EBB SB2209 can board for the stealth burner so I could go ahead and test it. Now during my testing, I'm going to give an honest review and give you my real thoughts and opinions on this. So I'm looking forward to putting this together. And one of the awesome things about the stealth burner is the fact that it has excellent documentation. And as you can see, I mean, every step is outlined. So what I'm going to do is just go through each of these steps and go ahead and put this full head together using that Big Tree Tech EBB SB2209. As another note on this board, just looking at the pricing, it is $25.68 on Big Tree Tech's website, or BQ's website, I'm sorry. And if I go over to Amazon, I'm actually seeing it for $39. So it's a little bit more expensive if you buy it from Amazon. So that, that's a little bit, I guess, rare to see that. I have purchased stuff off BQ slash Big Tree Tech's website in the past, and I found their shipping to be really good. I didn't have any problems with it. Additionally, I've also had good luck with their support when I did have an issue. So let's get started with the build. Taking a look at the box for the board, it actually comes with a bunch of different stuff. Thank you card, some stickers, a Big Tree Tech sticker, and then a Big Tree Tech plus Clipper sticker. So put those aside. Wiring for the board, the required Big Tree Tech rubber ducky. Put that aside. Here's the board, which begins really small. And then a set of wires and various connectors. It looks like there's some JST connectors in here and some other connectors. So I'm going to put this aside and put aside the box. Well, actually, I'll leave the box open so I can start putting parts in it. Some of the other parts I need is I have the guts of a BMG extruder. I just buy a cheap clone and then just take it all apart. And that's actually cheaper than if I just buy the parts separately. So I went ahead and did that. And then I have all the required bits and pieces for the stealth burner set out and ready to go. So what I'm gonna start with is putting together the stealth burner and I'll just follow along with the instructions. If I start scrolling through the instructions here, You'll notice again how detailed they are. First thing you need to do is put in the, the heated insets, inserts. And I've gone ahead and done that off camera. Installed all those through here. And I've made sure that they've sunk them correctly again based on the instructions. Now I had an issue with my video. I had this already recorded and I had to go back and re-record this section. So I'm going to apologize. I did this step off camera and I also put the gear in, but let me show you the results. Now, as I mentioned, I accidentally uh, deleted the video. So I have the screws in here and I have the gear. Literally, they just snap in. Now you want to make sure that everything spins correctly, which it does. It, the parts fit together really nicely. My next piece is this right here. And as, it's, as you can see, I have the thread of inserts in. So let's scroll down to the next step. So I'm orienting this like this. And wouldn't be an install with me unless I drop the parts. You can see the washer fits in there nicely. 
I'm not going to screw this too tight, but that part's all together. That was pretty easy. I'm going to set this aside. And let's look at what the next step is. Now, I've gone ahead and put the bearing in here. Here's the bearing separate. So I've just pushed that into the hole. Now, in my case, what I did in order to get in there, is I just used one of my microfiber towels, put it on top of the bearing, and pushed it in. So that way it's seated appropriately. Again, that, that looks pretty good. So let's keep going down and following along with these steps. Now, looks like I need to get the bearing in here again. So this is the other bearing that goes on the other side of this gear. Now, this is going to be a little hard. Let me see if I have a pair of tweezers here. See if I can push this down. And that actually worked. So now I have this seated right in here. That appears to be correct. And that feels really good. Now it looks like we need a flathead M36 screw. I had to buy some of these separate. Let's see. So here's the M36s. And that goes up in here. And that might help if I have the right bit. So let's switch over here so we can get that bit in here. So we have that screwing. So that's correct. And let's keep moving down. I'm just looking at this to make sure I have it right. And this, since this was in a BMG, it's already set up appropriately. So you can see it looks like it matches what's on the screen in the directions. So I think I can set that aside and just move down. So now what it wants me to do is this in here. And then fit these two pieces together. I have to hold my finger here because that doesn't feel like it's going, didn't quite go all the way through. So let's see, let's see if I can push this down a little bit. That might be all right. It did snap together. And I am spinning the gear here, so that feels correct. Let's just look in here. Everything's moving, so that's good. Now I need my M325s, and I want to orient this correctly. So it looks like it's in this position here. And the M325s are going here and down here. So get these two screws out. like it fit in and so it did there let's see this looks like it needs to go right about here and one of the notes it's saying is don't over tighten so i'm not 
putting these down too hard. Now I'm trying to do an alignment check here, and this looks a little off. So I just push that through a little bit more. And if you look right there, oops, it's a little hard to see. Let me see if I can get some light in here. The groove and the gear and the whole line up. And everything is still spinning, so that's good. Now, what it wants me to do is put in a piece of filament and just make sure this is all aligned. So let me get a piece of filament and we'll look at that. I have a piece of white filament here. I'm just going to slip this down through here. And from the look of it, hopefully you can see it. It's lining up well. It looks like I'm fitting right through there. So put that aside. So this is all lined up appropriately. You can see it's all lined up. Now I'm going to look over here. This side isn't sticking out, so that's nice and flush. We can look down the side there and we don't see it. And we want that to be flush. Now we're going to try to put the handle on. Make sure I have the screws I need. And I say try because I want to make sure I, I do this right. Things get lined up that hole right there. That sort of looks correct. Let's see if I can get that hole in. That screw in. Oh, that actually snapped in place without light. Feels okay, and I can sort of see that gear spinning in there. Now, one mistake I made is it looks like I need to leave the filament in. So let's run that back through. That feels pretty good, and everything appears to be moving on the inside. I'm pretty pleased with that. That slipped right in. Now I'm going to put this top piece in. I'll need to figure out how this looks like it needs to be oriented like this. Can't quite see how the holes go. Oops. I think I have them lined up now. So let's see. Oops, and I missed that, so that's not right. Let's take this screw back out. And I'll leave this in the video. Because again, you might as well see that I'm messing stuff up sometimes too. I'm really having trouble seeing that hole down there. So let me try. Okay, that actually got it that time. So that all snapped together. Still feels like we're grabbing the gears and grabbing the filament. There's some tension there. So that's looking good. So for the next step, I need my NEMA 14 motor. So I have that. And I'm going to go ahead and install that now. So I'm going to orient the motor this way. And then I need to take an M330. And let me see if I can go through the right hole here. I think I need to go through this one. That's going to grab this hole right here. And then the other screw is on the inside here. So let me figure out which screw I need to use. And I'll go ahead and do that one next. So I have an M38 with a washer. I'm going to slip that into here. And I need, let me get a Allen wrench that can fit through here. So, yeah, this won't, this won't go through. So let me get an Allen wrench so I can tighten this a little bit. So I have the Allen wrench. Let's see if we can, I want to get this started. I'm 
And as you can see, there's play in it. Apparently, I want that. I want that play. So in this next step, I need to make sure that the gears are meshing appropriately. And if I have it like this, it doesn't feel like they are. That feels pretty good. So let's, I'm going to go ahead and tighten this now. now. Let's make sure everything's still turning. I can see the nuts turning there. And it doesn't feel too tight. Also, if I look, filament as I move the gears is moving as well. Filament seems to be held in place really good. That's looking really good. For the next step, I'm going to install the chain anchor. Now, in my case, I don't actually think I need this because I'm not going to put on the chain. But I'm going to install everything just to be on the safe side. There. And then I have another screw on the inside. Let's scroll down, see what that looks like. That's an M3-8. So over here, I'm just going to tighten this. So I have that piece tightened in pretty good. And let's keep scrolling down here to see our next step. Now it looks like we need to open this latch and insert a screw through here. That's an M16. Let's push that through. I need to spin this down to get it all the way. Screw sort of push through and flush here. And then my next step is I need to put on the cable cover. And figure out how that goes. It should go something like this. Now, this screw threads directly to the plastic, so I have to be really careful. I'm just going to hold this like this. I can feel it biting into the plastic, so that's Good. That's really hard to get in there. And just to help things, it looks like I have a small 3 6 buttonhole. So let's do that. Let's get the 3 6 buttonhole in here too. And that way, that'll help hold this steady a little bit as I try to screw this in. There's that. this this way. See if we can see it a little bit better. Problem is, it says don't over tighten, but I have to really muscle this in because I need it past the latch. So that actually worked. And let's see if I can tighten this one just a little bit more. That looks pretty good. Yeah, I like that. I like the look and the feel of this. So let's go down to our next step. So now for the next couple of steps, I'm actually putting together the hot end. So I need to get some more pieces here for that. And for this stealth burner, I'm going to do a V6 hot end. I don't have a high speed hot end right now. Just going to go with this. I'm probably going to investigate getting a high speed hot end. I have bimetal heat break. That end. Tiny little parts here, so let me. Of 
pull this out, we can take a look. I have a grub screw right here, so I'm just going to go ahead and start that so I don't lose it. So I have a black pad down here on my desk. The last thing I want to do is start losing that grub screw because I'll never find it again. I just got that started, so that's good enough. And then I'm going to go ahead and start this screw as well. Let me see if I can figure out how I want this. So it looks like, looking at the back here, I need the wires coming up this way. So I want this sitting here. Let's get this in now. Yeah, this would be right. So I want to put the heater in here. I'm going to go ahead and tighten this in. Now let's put the thermistor in. It's just going to slip right there. And I just need to tighten this down. So I'm just tightening the grub screw, so that feels good. Then I'm going to let's do this. It's about even with the top. And I'm doing a point four. nozzle here and I'll have to heat that up get it in all the way but right now that feels good and I'm gonna cut these right here mainly just to so I'm not I don't have as much wire sticking out and I'll fix these later they're gonna come up right here that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to just keep going down to the next step. So I have this back plate to hold it in and I need M316. So I have that all put together. Now I need 11 millimeters sticking out the PTFE tubing. So let's go, let me get some PTFE tube and we'll measure all that out. So I already have a small piece of PTFE tubing. So I'm going to put that in there, and then it needs to be up 11 millimeters. So I'm going to just mark this off. If I can find a marker. Let me measure this again just to be on the safe side. That's right at about 11 millimeters, so I think that's good. I have... So here's the front of it. Now I have to figure out how I get the lights in here. I think I have this right here. So I have my diffuser mask. Right, it's right over here. So here's the diffuser mask. Let's see if I can. So the logo lead is this one. So if I'm interpreting this right, this should slide down here like this. So that looks correct. And then this is together like this. Let's see if I can get this in the tool head. I'll hold this this. There's the left. I'm sorry, the right. Let's slip in.
left. It looks like I need to slip the diffuser in first. So let's see if I can slip this in here. That looks correct. And let's slip this piece back in here. And then this needs to swipe right in here. There we go. So I got that in. That looks like I'm interpreting this right. I'm push these wires down in this channel here. I'm not gonna push all these wires under this little piece here. So what I'm doing is just push these wires down to make sure they're out of the way. And they'll get pinched. Like I said, hopefully this is all right. I wanna say that's perfect. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so I have my 4040 fan. Of course, this has no label on it. The way I know this is the label should be pointing in. This is gonna be pointed in towards the, I want the label pointed in towards the hot end. And there we go. So the band needs to be routed the same as the LEDs. It's going up here. That looks good so far. So now I have my 5015 fan that's going to go right in here. I need to take the case off and cut the ears off. So to do this, there's these little notches right here. Get this out of the way. I'll cut those little notches off with my snips. That should allow me to take the fan cover off. So I'm gonna put this aside. And I have a little bit heavier duty snips right here. I'm gonna try very carefully, cut the ears off. Now, when I cut the ears off, they do shoot across the room. And I wanna trim this down just a little bit. That looks okay. Trim this a little bit. So I, I want this nice and clean. And this is gonna slip. First, let me move this wire into here. It's gonna slip right down in here. This is gonna be a tight fit. I don't wanna keep trim this a little more here. Like I said, this is going to be a tight fit. There we go. Now I have two little M36 flathead screws to right here to hold the fan in place. Let's get those out. Let's change what bit I have. These are going to go right into the plastic. Just get these in. And to hold things in place. I'm not making this too tight. Now, I'm going to scroll down. There's a snarky remark. And let me find the next steps. So as you can see, I've mounted the plate and the hermit crab. That looks pretty good. That's using a clicky probe, but we actually have a BL touch. So let me get the BL touch out of the box and I'll mount that. That'll be mounted right in here. And my first step here is I'm going to have to figure out exactly how far down this needs to be. Yeah, so we need this spacer in here. It's going to be something like that. Now. 
put this in. Plug this in first. And run the wires up here. So otherwise, once I get this in here, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get in there good. Now, I need to figure out what size screw I need. So I'm using M25s here. They're a little too long. They're a little long, but I'm just going to. So that should be about correct. It's going to be a little hard to get on. Let me get my bit here. I've got one side on. Let's see if I can get the other side. Let me just pause it back. So as you can see, I have the probe mounted. That looks correct. It's tight. Fits down that groove there. It's all wired already. So as of right now, I have all the pieces put together for the extruder. Now I have to start on the Big Tree Tech EBB SB2209 board. And I'm gonna go ahead and break here and then I'll do a follow-up video with the installation and setup of that. Because I don't want this video to go too long. If you have any questions or comments for what I've done so far, please post them below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks. Have a good day. Bye. Hi, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP and I want to thank you for joining me today. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. If you need some additional help, I've also posted some links in the video description. You can set up a 15 minute help session with me and I'm more than happy to sit down with you and see if I can help you out. If you need some additional help, I'm also going to try doing one hour sessions for anybody that's interested. And like I said, I'm testing this stuff out. I want to thank you again for joining me and I look forward to talking to you again next time. Thanks. Have a good day. Bye.